thank you for coming here today. I'm the coordinator of the Adami Media Prize, uh, Prize Nelly, and today our mediator, our moderator is Alexander Levtsov from the uh, Suspilne uh, News Station. Uh, this prize is was created to encourage uh, writers, directors, and producers uh, to help them in their work with uh, subjects relating to cultural diversity, especially ethnic and religious and, uh, and national minorities. Any content relating to these subjects uh, is in our area of interest. interest. So please uh, give more uh, attention to uh, diversity and to minorities and uh, keep in contact with us. We're going to show you a brief trailer and uh, and then we'll continue with the program. Just a moment, Edima will turn it on. We live in a diverse world today where we depend on each other. Assuring that different voices are heard, protecting human rights and working for peace are key factors to building a civil society is the backbone of our nations. Six countries that share a common Soviet history are joined in the Eastern Partnership with the European Union. It's these countries where the Adani Media Prize focuses on media coverage on national, ethnic, or religious minorities and awards the most outstanding productions. TV entertainment, documentaries, news broadcasts, and online platforms, the media play a decisive role in shaping our views and making decisions. To broaden the perspective of journalists, filmmakers, producers, and broadcasters, the Adami Media Prize organizes networking events, enables mentoring and knowledge exchange, and initiates international cooperation. Only when we look across borders, both inside and outside our societies, when we listen to different voices and opinions, our region can become a place of peace and life quality. Uh, unfortunately, there were some difficulties with the internet here, but I hope uh, you were able to hear the uh, the trailer. First, we're going to hear who is going to be participating today, what who our experts are, and then we'll have a discussion. Uh, if everyone who wants to speak needs to press the raise hand button, and um, if they want to say something, or you can ask your question in the chat box, and we will read the question to the uh, to the experts. My name is Alexander, and I'm really happy to see you all here. And first of all, I want to introduce myself. I work for, for the Ukrainian public broadcaster in Kyiv, and I'm a presenter. Uh, but recently, I was a host the prize, uh, the live pitching of media projects. It was in Tbilisi, uh, in Georgia. And it's a new initiative uh, of the Adami Media Prize. And it calls for um, pitching of the projects related with the, um, with the cultural diversity, first of all, with the religious, uh, ethnic, uh, tolerant, and peaceful um, um, meaning of everything what we create in, in media. So, as, uh, as a presenter, I traveled a lot, but before I, I became a presenter, I was a European volunteer uh, in uh, Poland, and I lived for a year with, um, uh, with, uh, should ask, oh yeah, yeah, that's right now. Um, I lived with uh, 10 other people, from different countries and um, for a year. And it was very, very nice experience because I opened for a lot of cultures, a lot of uh, people with different sites. Um, 
It was very nice. And then I started to work for Reuters News Agency. It's a huge organization, news organization um, that works uh, with a lot of different countries, with a lot of um, people around the world. And it brings this cultural diversity um, and tolerance to the world as well. So this topic is very close to me and I'm really pleased that Adani Media Prize invited me. I think I should ask people who are not talking just to mute their microphones because we're here. Thank you. So, and we have um, our guests, our lovely guests who are um, with us today. This is um, Georgian Ukrainian band Dudu and Lala. Hello, guys. They actually recently uh, took part uh, in a documentary, uh, and it was documentary. It was on this live pitching uh, show in Adami Media Prize. And if you want, you still can donate for and contribute in the uh, creating of this movie. So we have on Adami Media Prize open on the website. We have open crowd, crowdfunding, so you can go there. And if you like this project, okay. you can donate. Okay, okay, thank you. And uh, also, we have choreographer and director Olga Simioshkina. Hello, Olga. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we have writer, director, and producer Yaroslav. Korotkov. Hello, Yaroslav. Yeah, thank you. Nice to Hello. have you here. So first of all, what I just want to discuss and start, I, I would like to hear Dudu and Lala as I, I've met them in Tbilisi. And uh, this is the band, Georgian and Ukrainian. It's is like we're talking about like collaboration of cultures for as its inspiration. So for them, it was like really inspiration and start of this uh, project. So I would like to ask you, how do you think and how was for you um, this collaboration of your cultures? How does affect it of your works and your Arts. Um, hello, it's, uh, you hear me, yes? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you for question, for inviting in this uh, nice project. Uh, for example, for me, especially for me, it was a big surprise, this project, because I never hear about that... Uh, um, can um, just ID, just ID uh, to to take part in big competition, not competition even, it's good, nice festival about ID, about uh, uh, cinema. I really, it's give me much inspiration. Yeah, it's about festival, about uh, our project, Dudu and Lala. It's also uh, very uh, nice for our soul and heart because we feel really uh, this Dudu uh, very uh, like friendly at first, like um, power when we together, uh, like good, good friends, like good uh, partner uh, in um, art. And uh, really we have a very close uh, uh, mind and heart like countries. It's Georgian and Ukrainian. It's much, uh, um, uh, how we say, uh, similarity, much similarity from uh, from inside, and of course, it's uh, give uh, for us uh, much inspiration in uh, our art. And now, uh, of course, we have big band like uh, six, seven, sometimes persons in uh, people in our band. But when we are together, like uh, duet. It's also a very interesting project. And now we like, um, like a full project already, like product 
already because before it was ID with a big group but now when we have time when we not uh, always can have a concert together we um, have gastrol just uh, tw twice I mean uh, do it so it's start to be like product in uh, uh, our country and I hope we can show our pro product in many other countries like uh, Georgia like uh, we start from Georgia now, <laughs> so it's good. So we are we are happy and thank thank you for question. Yeah, thank you, Dudu. Maybe you can want to to add something from you. Uh, I'll say it in in Russian if that's okay. Uh, once again, hello everyone. Uh, a few words about our project. I, yes, Dudu and Lala. Lala has explained well that our project includes uh, six or seven people in, a, in the group, but we have come here, uh, just the two of us, and uh, uh, this was a bit uh, uncomfortable for me because I'm used to a lot of sound, a lot of live sound, and here... Uh, you know, I was a bit uncomfortable, but this is a great experience for me. And I am, uh, I'm always open to experiments. That's, uh, that's what I do. I always experiment and continue forward. And I don't see any reason not to. We, we will always uh, continue doing our, our thing. And I, I really like it. I'm very happy that, that, I'm very happy about what's happening with me, and I'm very, very glad uh, for all of this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, um, we have Olga Simoshkina. She is a choreographer in the theater in Kiev, and um, she also mix um, her background of different countries in her works, and she has like very big experience, as I know for living in different countries and like traveling. Please tell us, how do you mix your background in cultural diversity, what you have? How do you mix in your works and, and in your dances and your performances? Mm, uh, thank you. I, I try to talk, uh, talk uh, Russian. Because I studied in France, uh, in the Academy for Performance Arts, I have uh, my education there, contacts with friends in countries all over the world. But because my profession is not just choreography, it's, all, it's also directing, we also like to, to make clips and, for example, prepare for... Uh, Euro Eurovision. I was, uh, I've all, uh, often been involved in uh, filming, and you know, creative contacts and creative projects are always, always give you the chance to develop your uh, creative potential. And another culture is always a new stage for self development. I very much love, for example, Japan. I love traveling around Japan. I have experience working with Austrian colleagues. Um, in the area of opera. I love to combine, like, like most uh, creative people, I love to jump from culture to culture. Uh, for example, not just dramatic uh, theater, but also in the circus arts or creating uh, performances, creating schools. And as a, as an, as a creative person, I, I like studying uh, dramaturgy and maybe I don't know that much about modern dramatur dramaturgy but uh, I've, I'm very much into classical uh, theater I, I like experiments with uh, Shakespeare with the classics with uh, and I search for new forms of self-expression as a creative person I can say we don't have enough uh, technology in the on the stage. This is very well developed in France and Germany. 
where there's more technology and there's more connection between technologies and engineering and the theater. Um, unfortunately, we haven't reached that level yet, but from my uh, perspective, we do have the, we've made a start. The Ukrainian people are interested in all cultures, all eth ethnicities, and I'm very happy for the uh, people, for our colleagues here who are singing together in a duet. I like to jump into new collaborations uh, with new partners as a creative person, you know, in France, in Japan, and I like uh, to develop myself in this way. And I'm happy that our creative potential is, is part of every person, and we jump from one culture to another culture. I, I'm happy to try myself in, in business or theater. And I think the same is true of, of you guys who are singing your duet. You're the, you're the same type of people. And this is how we develop as creative people. And I'm happy when there's the chance to have contact with absolutely different cultures because this uh, enriches us and helps us to create new projects. I hope that everyone can uh, learn more about different cultures, travel more. And you know, as an interesting uh, work, uh, this is my recent interest. I've been working with a uh, with the Kar Kharkov theater, the modern theater, and we're with the with a uh, with a, a composer. We have solfeggios written, uh, especially for the theater. Uh, and I've been working as a choreographer there. And we have created material that is quite experimental in nature, which is quite interesting for, uh, for Ukrainians to view. And uh, this is what we've developed with the uh, Austrian Cultural Center. Uh, we've gained this great experience of a, a a completely mm, modern, uh, modern day theater experience. And uh, of course, I plan to be involved in many other projects, but you know, to be honest, is people who create, is people who create uh, creative projects. And so it's always interesting to communicate with people from different cultures. Thank you very much, and I'm I'm really happy that uh, you are collaborating together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is very interesting. And uh, <clears throat> also, I want to ask uh, another speaker today is Yaroslav. And um, we've heard from Olga about um, that she she was studied in France, and she she has a lot of different international projects. And here now in Ukraine, we have like a um, trends or something kind of movement that a lot of young people, they're going abroad for studying and um, a lot of like, let's say elder people, they're saying that it's not very good because like young people are going abroad and like they can stay there. What do you think about this experience of these young people who are going abroad to study? Is it dangerous for Ukrainian culture or for Ukraine in general? Yaroslav. Thank you for the question. I think that the greatest threat for the country as now and in the past and probably in the future can only be the economic condition of the country. The fact that people are leaving is the result of the economic condition of the country. And uh, what's happening now, I'm working on a project uh, relating, it's a documental documentary about uh, Ukraine, Ukrainians in this area. And I think many, th the same thing is happening in, in other, uh, many things are happening uh, the same way is in the Ukrainian IT uh, field. 
People left in the 90s and the 2000s, but now they're coming back. In Ukraine, for example, in IT, uh, the economic conditions have become actually better than in other countries. On one hand, this isn't very good. It's not very good that young people leave, but we have the example of I India, for example, uh, the, you know, 15 years ago, everyone was leaving India uh, in media and IT, but now these people have gained lots of experience, colossal experience in the US and in Europe. Now they're returning home and they're creating a new industry. And I think, uh, of course, of course, this cultural exchange as a way to gain new experience and a new education, it is essential. But currently, I don't see big problems in Ukraine uh, having to do with a lot of people leaving. What I see are a lot of people who want to stay here and make a pro and make projects here. That's the trend that I see. And actually, the development of technology uh, facilitates uh, the exchange of knowledge and experience uh, without having to leave your country. We're more autonomous now. We have the opportunity to speak together uh, thanks to these new technologies which help us to do this. And so uh, my attitude is positive towards this uh, trend. I see that everyone who leaves, uh, they gain uh, great experience, massive experience. Probably they will return and help to build any industry in the, in the country, or maybe in co-production with other countries, uh, adding their own individual uh, experience and creating something new. That's my attitude. Thank you. That's, it's a good point. Like um i'm not telling about me but i'm like an example of um, people who went abroad who get some experience who got some friends in uh, different countries and now we are like meeting each other we're seeing each other like from time to time we have different exchanging of minds and everything and i think really that if you have more friends abroad, like in different countries, you're richer and you can do better work and because you, you can see some good examples and, or you can see bad examples and you can choose where to, to move. Uh, if saying like regarding Yaroslav, uh, your experience and your works, how does this collaboration of cultures um, affect um, your special works. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. I have wonderful memories of international collaboration. I was, I think, 19 or, or maybe 18. I was uh, a sophomore in the university and a film crew, crew came from the London Film Academy. There was a, a girl who, uh, a director there from London, and there was a producer, a, a small film group that came to Ukraine. The main, uh, most of them were from London, but the rest of them, including me, were from Ukraine. We helped to uh, organize the process, find locations and take care of other organizational duties. And, this co-production, this work, gave me an understanding of, you know, it, it wasn't just a cultural exchange or, or an exchange of views, worldviews. It was mainly exchange within the industry, and it gave an understanding of how they work and what the differences are between their industry and our industry. Uh, 13 years ago, Ukrainian uh, cinema barely existed. There were just a few films that, uh, a few filmmakers. But uh, after talking to them, I realized that everything in the film industry is well-developed in our country. 
everything is thought through, everything is professional. We could see this in everything they did, in their attent attention to detail. The operator, film operator, uh, who worked for two, two days, you know, he came on the third day with a bottle of beer and he was immediately dismissed without, uh, without any explanation. And we uh, wanted to cross a railway with the film crew, crew and they said, no, 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 we're not going to fall across the train tracks. And so they walked one more kilometer to reach the uh, special passage across the railway. They follow the rules, basically. And so I think that ex experience uh, collaborating and this professional co-production is a kind of journey where you are visiting another country, but you're finding something new. You're finding out something new about the mentality. And I think co-production is a great opportunity, not uh, to learn, to find out about people, but also to learn about the industry and find out more about it. Gain uh, some insights for yourself. That's how I see it. Cool, thank you. Very nice experience. Like, it's, it's cool that you have this experience in Ukraine when someone comes to, to you, you can see different, uh, different uh, points of view as well. Uh, Olga, I want to ask you, uh, um, of course, this project, this Adami Focus, it um, became like like this in in Zoom because of the pandemic, if you know, and that's why we are in Zoom. We are not like in we are not meeting each other offline, which is bad, of course. I, for me, I like to to see people like in person, uh, but. It's also, I think, probably has affected culture and the diversity in the world. Olga, what do you think? How the COVID-19 pandemic has affected this cultural diversity and cultural collaboration between people? Well, I'll say directly, we have uh, we've gone into Zoom, we've started working online, but, you know, uh, it's, we just finished uh, working on a video clip, that's uh, the partnership that we're working on, and I can't say that, you know, people aren't, haven't stopped. We know that uh, some of these studios all around the world are in depression, and they, they've, uh, they started to working on their psychological problems, and that's okay. That's normal, a normal part of the pandemic. But part of the people, they're part of the people who are still active, and they have they're planning their projects. I have many friends in Germany who are gradually uh, working on on moving to an online format. But you know, we're we're doing video clips uh, in different locations. We don't even meet in a single territory. I uh, give them the tasks here in Kiev and they do the work in Germany or maybe I write uh, online lessons and then my partners uh, flesh them out and then we receive a, a finished product. Project. Uh, there, there aren't any fewer stories. There, there isn't any less theater, but you know, people have maybe less energy and desire, but we're, we're living now and uh, I'm an optimist. And so if I'm not uh, stopping and there are five or seven people who are next to me who also aren't stopping and who are trying to develop, you know, that's, uh, that's a, a great development. Some projects have gone into the planning stages, but nobody has stopped completely. In this time, I have developed many new technologies. I'm a very curious person. And so I've jumped into uh, shipbuilding, for example, uh, plastics, uh, environmental, environmentally friendly plastics. What's the way to? How should I put it? Uh, the attempts to um, improve the consciousness, awareness of people uh, using universal. Uh, ad universally adapt. Uh, into a adapt to a an 
environmentally clean system without creating any you know uh, pollution including the ecology of awareness consciousness we're looking for the keys for this of course i i would be lying if i said uh, we we are now uh, shut down no we have our rehearsals a lot a lot of people are vaccinated we're developing materials uh, we're we're working on dramaturgy in on film projects everything depends on the person and uh, his or her willingness to continue working i don't know what else i can say about uh, as for music um, uh, during this period of time i've gained friends uh, on facebook with uh, different musicians to learn more about the different musical directions uh, that's my personal experience wow that's super cool i'd say uh, it's a different experience. It's just a different experience. I apologize for speaking so long. Very interesting. That's why we invited you. It's very cool because you have this everyday um, experience with musicians, with dancers, with uh, directors, with movies, with everything. That's really, really cool. <laughs> Um, my next question is for Dudu, especially, because I know that Dudu and Lala, they live now in Kiev, but Dudu is from, from Georgia. And I would like to ask you about, like, how would how it be Georgian in Ukraine? Is it easy or you have some difficulties, like, in in cultural way? Sorry, your microphone is turning off. No, it's still mute. Hello, hello. Yeah. Hello, hello. Да, теперь. Да, да, да. Yes. So uh, I've been in, I've been living in Ukraine for seven years. Of course, when I came initially, there were some difficulties. There were some situations that I didn't understand. Uh, but now I can say that Georgia and Ukraine for me are like uh, they're they're you know brotherly nations. Maybe you've heard this, and I really believe it because there are a lot of things we share in common. And here I feel. Uh, like home. I'm comfortable here. Uh, I'm more comfortable even than currently than in, in Georgia. That's my sense right now. And you know, this has been going on for seven years. And that's why I created this uh, Georgian and Ukrainian group, because I knew that I need to do more. And before that, I had just a Georgian group. And after I realized that I need to do something more for uh, larger audiences, uh, I created the uh, Dudu Band or Dudu and Lala project. And uh, with with the Vina Kastenka, uh, Shevchenko, and other Ukrainian uh, and Ukrainian and Georgia Georgian uh, writers, we have uh, class both classics and and poetry and. Uh, uh, stories and and uh, original music. You know, I'm the only Georgian in the group. Everyone else is Ukrainian, and I I feel uh, comfortable. I feel great. I can't say there are any uh, difficulties right now. I I I adequately uh, understand that uh, Ukraine have different ways of doing some some things than Ukrainian than Georgians. I was born in. I was raised in Georgia, but now live in Ukraine. And I understand how to communicate with both groups, with Ukrainians and Georgians. I think this is a, a great advantage for me. I'd like to live like this. And this is uh, this is good for me. I love Ukraine. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, yeah. oh, I, uh, can I answer the question? I, I just wanted to, to say what I, I just said now. Maybe that's not exactly what you were asking. Yeah, perfect. 
<laughs> and Olga, I, also I spoke with uh, Yaroslav about like people, young people who are going abroad to study, and they probably they some some of them are going to stay abroad, but some of them are come back. What do you think about this trends from these last years? I'll say uh, honestly, you know, I'm I'm one of those who w went abroad to study and returned, and so my sense is that, you know, we have Ukrainian saying. There's a Ukrainian saying, "Where you were born, stay there, and you'll be needed there." But you know, you gain experience in other countries and you bring it back, and. From a philosophical perspective, uh, every person has a mission in life. And I am a person, a citizen of the world. Tomorrow I can be in another country. I might spend half a year or a year there and then return home. I'm a, a, and I think that a, everyone needs to listen to themselves and and look for the place where they're comfortable creating. And I like the fact that there's this trend and every uh, every every person is creative. And I think that every person born on this planet is creative. There are no non-creative people. They're just people who haven't yet developed uh, or opened their creativity in themselves or maybe certain uh, experiences have closed off their creativity. That's my personal opinion. And I think that people need to uh, gain uh, ed an education w um, in several cultures. So my daughter, for example, is studying in the theater uh, academy. She's learned from uh, Ukrainian, Russian, and now a little bit of Indian culture uh, through her mother. And she's gained a wonderful uh, musical and film education. Fichtyuk uh, is uh, nearby, and she has seen how he correct he creates theater uh, plays and other uh, playwrights. And I've tried to give her this experience in the theater, and and uh, the fact that she uh, has a, a taste for. Uh, these uh, cultural grapes is really uh, a great advantage for her. I think that uh, a person is free to choose. Uh, the financial uh, finances of a person never determine the cultural choice of a person. And there's this view that if a person goes abroad, they won't return. But, you know, even if we stay abroad, we are mentally, spiritual, spiritually tied to the place where we were born and raised our family, our uh, relatives, parents, they stay with us. And we, we can hear in, in a person's voice that they are nostalgic, but they have found themselves in another country. Why not? They're a free person. They feel comfortable comfortably here. Uh, they can develop themselves uh, uh, creatively. And when this period of time ends, they may move to a different area. We are creative people, and I, uh, I support creative flexibility. We need to um, do what makes our own cultural culture richer. I don't know, you know, uh, there are Polish uh, directors, for example, which uh, have plays in, in France, uh, others who spend half a year to a year in other countries, and and they gain a new experience and then return home and this enriches them. This is great. That's what we're born for. We're born to learn all the uh, the perfections and imperfections of human nature. And we need to let our children out. This is normal. That's okay. Yeah, I think so. Okay. <clears throat> Yaroslav, I've, I've read one of your interview and you told that in Ukraine, there are a lot of like people um, who wants to make art, make cinemas, dance, sings, but we have kind of tradition that it's not 
really cool to go to like from our parents it's not really cool to go to dance because people can say like parents can say that it's not like a specialization it's not your profession um what do you think about this every every young people um has to go to where he wants to go or or it's better to listen to parents and to go somewhere else Thank you for the question. You know, I don't actually remember that interview, but, but uh, maybe I said something like that. Um, I think a lot about the difference between generations. Generational conflict has existed always uh, for all, all times, you know, children and parents, parents and grandparents. T the times are changing very quickly, and we see how worldviews are changing. And I think in the post-Soviet space, this difference between the generations is more obvious than in other countries, because in the Soviet Union, there was a kind of uh, cultural and informational ice isolation. There wasn't a chance to uh, ex for cultural exchange or information exchange with the rest of the world. And when the Soviet Union collapsed, uh, there, there came these, the impression that young people who are open to new cultures, cultures they, they, uh, they surfed the new wave. But Older people couldn't do this. And there are people who are still in a kind of informational vacuum. And so this difference uh, in generations in, so, in post-Soviet Soviet countries is even more obvious than in the rest of the world. That's a, a kind of preface I would give. And on the backdrop of this mm, conflict, uh, questions like, uh, what one should study or what profession one should choose. Of course, one needs to follow uh, their heart, but take into uh, consideration the wisdom and experience of our parents. But we are responsible for our own lives. We need to be prepared to bear this responsibility. And to make the right choice, you need to try a lot of different things in life in, life, in order to and, uh, to realize uh, what you want to do, uh, you know, by age 17 or 18. Of course, you won't be able to try everything, but you can try as much as possible uh, from what uh, the modern world offers in order to simply uh, discover what you want to, what you want to do. And so it's answering your question, I think that now young people have all the opportunities like never before the world offers the greatest opportunities in all of human history the greatest freedom and so we need to follow our decisions and i think actually if you know in the past one's choice of profession was a determining factor in the rest of a person's life i think Things are a lot simpler now. You, you had to study in a university in the past for five or six or seven years. You had to join a community because there was, the, there was no other way to obtain knowledge. Now you can, you can get some courses uh, in half a year. You can uh, gain a background knowledge and work in any area that you're interested in. And so I think we need to be more courageous in accepting uh, new th innovations. We need to listen to and respect our parents, but in the end, we need to follow our hearts and our personal mission. Okay, totally agree. Thank you. Because I had like this uh, experience as well. Uh, I went, went to, um, but then, uh, I studied and then I changed my, my career and I became a journalist. So, 
everything is possible. And of course, I had this cultural experience then, and I think it made me like, like this. So, okay. Um, if anyone has a question, maybe, um, may, yeah, Nelly, please. I have a question uh, based on where, based on my work, we gain a lot of uh, 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 inquiries from different countries of the, in, of the Eastern Partnership. And sometimes people ask, uh, they say, this is an interesting topic, but it's very local. And I'll, I'll have a question for each of you. And so my question is this, when you're uh, developing your career, uh, when you're, uh, when you're uh, becoming a part of the world uh, career community, or maybe foreigners uh, gain prominence in the European, uh, sorry, in the Ukrainian, uh, uh, on the Ukrainian stage, you know, where is the boundary between cultures? How can we reach the Ukrainian market? Or how can Ukrainians reach the Ukraine? Sorry, how can Europeans reach the Ukrainian or Georgian markets? Answer the question. Okay. Oleg. I see that, uh, Alek. Uh, turn on your microphone, please. Sorry about that. Yes, now do you hear me? Very well then. Well, I think there is actually there is no frontier. It may be temporary. It might take some time. But uh, talking about culture, we should be talking about big things, about really big things like Renaissance, Barocco, Classicism. It takes centuries. So now I'm perfectly certain, I'm sure that we are entering a new cultural epoch, the epoch of cultural synthesis. So we have maintained our cultural diversity. And now, on, again, the background of all the context we have established, we do have this possibility to make uh, our cultures merge, uh, to produce a new uh, product, which will uh, actually imply everything we have uh, worked out previously. So this barrier of entering markets, of uh, establishing bridge, bridges, I think it will take some time, uh, but it will not be uh, the thing which will uh, determine the cultural progress in general. So now we are just moving in the right direction. And Adam E. Phil Price is uh, just a good example of that. We are breaking the ice, <laughs> we are building the bridges. So it will be coming soon, I think. Thank you so much. Um, Dudu, Dudu, what do you think? Yaroslav and Dudu, what do you think? Uh, can I answer? I think that I think there are no frontiers. And uh, what Oleg uh, said is correct. The time for synthesis has come. For 20 years, I've been observing that we have always had the chance, the, the ability to find a common language. It might be the la body language. It might be a, a verbal language. It might be the language of visual arts. But, uh, you know, it's people's task to find a way to uh, communicate with each other. Uh, humans are the only creatures who can do that. There are problems, of course. There, there are. There's the desire in each uh, group, and uh, I've also worked with. You've probably worked with large groups of people from different cultures, and there's always, there's often a desire. Uh, if if a person individual has the desire to hear another individual, and involve them in their creative work then magic happens. If there's no interest, then magic doesn't happen. And so this is a question of both personal interest and also the interest of creating a common work of art. And this isn't a one-step project, it's something that evolves. And I think uh, it's true that there's a new wave of a culture, a new era 
uh, I apologize for the generalization, but the, the pandemic has brought this about. And I think this is uh, a time when we can uh, hear others and we can work on this, not to find out what their position is, but to create something on the basis of an ethnos. Ethnos, uh, et ethnoses uh, have existed for centuries and centuries, especially in India, China, Japan. And the Slavs have also uh, made a mark on the world. And we need to uh, hear each other and uh, bring this all together. Uh, dramaturgy is, uh, is quite expressive. I wouldn't say it's, uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm not telling you anything new, but at the same time, uh, you know, there are German writers, Ukrainian, Russians. Uh, I don't know much about Georgia, I apologize, but I know a little bit about uh, modern contemporary Japanese uh, writing and art. But what's interesting is that everyone have came up to the came to the level of the psychological problems that a person has created himself and can solve only himself and we return to the fact that only another person can help a person and that's a, a matter of culture thank you uh, i don't know how to answer it anymore we have two hands uh, you are the first I can't hear you. Uh -huh. yeah. Can you hear me now? From, I'd like to say based on my personal experience, when I created the group and uh, began working uh, creatively, you know, this wasn't that long ago, maybe 10 years ago. And today we were talking, I don't remember who, but, uh, you know, sometimes circumstances don't allow a person to... Uh, do creative work, do the work that they want. But I think now the time has come. I feel it that way, that we can do what we want. And we also heard this today. And what I'd like to point out is that my person, my attitude is that we need to develop our cultures so that Europe and America are interested in our cultures, Ukrainian culture, Georgia culture, Georgian culture. I know these cultures very well. I think we need to make our cultures interesting and develop them. And I think that before, before uh, musical uh, notes were invented, the Georgians were already singing polyphony. And I told jazz musicians, how, to ex how can this be explained? We didn't have uh, musical uh, notes yet. This was uh, invented in the 10th century, I think. And this is a, uh, you know, this is a unique case. There's no answer. If we are this unique uh, case, we need to show this to all of the world. But this needs to be presented well. We need to learn how to present it well. And one needs to learn how to do that. This is a question of marketing and we need to know how to present it, how to speak and how to act. If, you know, we had the chance to, uh, to uh, have a concert in Switzerland and they said the same to, thing to us. Uh, these were pure Swiss people. They said, this is interesting. We're interested in Ukraine. We're interested in Georgia. We want to know what... Uh, what do you have in terms of culture? What do you, how you dance, what you eat, how you eat. And I think we need to make, uh, we need to work a lot on this so that people see something modern, contemporary in what we're doing. And this will draw interest uh, to our music, uh, dance, culture. I'm, I'm sure, uh, because I know what, Georgia and Ukraine are capable of. They are extremely capable. We have such a huge potential uh, from the universe. And we need to preserve this and, and strive to uh, develop this. I don't know if I've explained uh, well, but 
I really want uh, everyone in the world to know who we are, who we are. You know, uh, before jazz even existed in Georgia, you know, we, we didn't know about jazz. We weren't allowed uh, abroad uh, to Europe. And so people didn't know. Uh, but now people are finding out about more, uh, Georgian polyphony singing music. We need to show, uh, present ourselves in the right way. We have everything we need. Everything is open. Uh, we have everything we need to conquer the world. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you have a question? Uh, we can hear you. Sorry. We can hear you. Ala, Ala. Oh, yeah. Yes, I've turned it on. I started in English and then decided to speak in Russian. I just wanted to give my two cents listening to you. You know, we should be talking about values that are universal, that everyone can understand. But at the same time, uh, preserve our ethno and cultural identity, because I think this cultural identity is the strength uh, of each of us. And if we create the content and video and musical content that we have, and we tell about problems that are universal, but at the same time, uh, bring in the ethno culture, I think that is our greatest strength. That's what I wanted to say, thanks. Uh, Yaroslav. Yes, I also raised my hand. I agree with everyone here. I think it's a great uh, challenge uh, for the world right now. We've been talking about um, erasing boundaries, but it's really important to preserve your national uh, identity because there's something uh, wonderful about this. You know, Georgia is wonderful because it's Georgia. And when we talk about Georgia, we have this image, uh, a particular image, a particular mentality in mind. When we talk of France or any other country, the same thing uh, comes to mind. Or Ukraine. Uh, boundaries uh, uh, may exist. Uh, you know, there, but there are universal ideas, university, universal languages. And so we can talk about how to reach other countries. And this, this is through universal ideas that are part of the human soul, regardless of uh, ethnicity. And I think this idea will be popular in any country. The main thing is to find the idea find the way to present this idea such that it uh, brings the person, brings some, uh, a desire to strive for uh, what's better in, in those who are partake of the art. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> we have a question from uh, Ekaterina. Uh, hello, everyone. How is it possible to create something important without co-financing only with Ukrainian money? and whether it influences product creation when funding comes from abroad. What do you think about it? Who wants to answer this question? Does it affect uh, money from abroad for, to the project? Yaroslav. Yaroslav. The most obvious thing, in my opinion, is that this is a, an additional opportunity for the project, uh, financial opportunities. But I think even more, this is an opportunity, if we're talking about uh, cinema, co-production is gives you the chance to expand the market, which the product will be shown to. And so it's uh, 
the profitability will potentially be better uh, because you know most Ukrainian products uh, don't get aren't profitable enough not just because of the Ukrainian laws but because the market is small and what's produced here uh, already in the pre-production stage it's doomed to financial failure and co-production gives you the chance to broaden your market and often these projects are quite successful not to mention the fact that the ideas that we create have more influence. But if we're speaking pragmatically, co-production uh, broadens your uh, financial opportunities and, and all up other opportunities okay. as well. Thank you. I see this as a great advantage. In Ukraine, we have several you know, there's Pichuar uh, contest where you can come, sorry, Pichua, where you can come with your idea. And I like the fact that funding is coming from outside. And this helps us to uh, offer the right ideas because you, especially people of, of the older generation who rarely uh, watch movies and, and mainly watch TV, they can change their attitudes through projects that, uh, that bring the right values. Their basic human example, uh, disciplining children and universal things. And here we're uh, talking to you here in Kiev, but if you go into the provincial re uh, region, you know, uh, parents uh, still uh, tell their daughters, for example, you need to go to the institute, get study, get an education, and uh, you get a husband so that you can uh, give us two uh, children. You know, so what's com uh, commercially viable is uh, entertainment, but deep art are usually document documentaries, which people watch late at night, or ethno films, which are only uh, shown in non-commercial theaters, or maybe uh, subsidies, something subsidized by a TV channel through some quotas that they, they, they have to enable them to uh, show some uh, value-based projects. Uh, uh, Olga, what do you think about this? Please turn on your uh, microphone. Yes, I was thinking about this, and I mm, support creative teams, creative tandems, duets. From a creative person's perspective, in order to cre create a product of Ukraine of European level, you need to know more about the discussions taking place in more than one country. You need to know which level to, which level of uh, audience you want to create the project for. I understand that Ukraine is a little bit uh, on the edge of Ukraine, of European culture. And I know there are people, I know people, there are lots of them, in fact, in Ukraine, who provide con consult consultations to artists who uh, present work ab abroad. I have many friends uh, whose children are studying in England. And I ran off to France myself. That was my personal initiative. And, uh, you know, I'm a person from the Soviet, Soviet Union. And, you know, there are particular human, uh, human values, which are universal across the world, honor, uh, self-respect, things like that. No matter what we talk about, communication difficulties, uh, you know, fun, funding can't solve communication difficulties. Uh, or, you know, if you have an idea, you can always find 
the way to reach any fund. The main thing is to talk about your idea. For many people, the main problem, you know, in Ukraine and in uh, in Georgia, in the post-Soviet space, the main problem is that we haven't trained, we haven't raised our children to speak openly. And there's often a problem where a child has an idea, has an idea on paper, but now there's the chance to, to realize, to, uh, to do something with this idea. We have social media, we have the internet, we can do uh, many things through the internet. I have friends who are working for Google, for example, and that's okay. They're, they're creating their own products. And that's the personal path of a person. The fact, the, the fact that the government isn't interested in it, you know, that depends more on people like you and me. I think that uh, it depends on us whether the next uh, generation will be heard. Will we be uh, in line with the times? There's a very uh, global problem having to do with particular uh, age groups, uh, a lack of desire to move forward. That is a big problem. Why do we have a generation gap? Why is this a, a big problem? Because uh, children run away from their from their parents. My my child didn't run away from me because we have common interests. And I think if everyone uh, loved each other and and uh, and gave their children the space to do this, uh, you know, I've I've gone off <laughs> on a tangent, uh, but this is a, an issue of the family. The family is not just parents and children. Families include, uh, you know, the work uh, groups, your colleagues, uh, relatives, friends. We don't give our children sometimes the chance to realize themselves in uh, international projects. That is true. My, I was, I was helped by two funds which no longer exist in Ukraine. Uh, maybe on paper they exist, and and these funds helped me to study abroad. You know, now we always have the issue of of trying to make the next step for our children, and this is a test. If we can learn. If we can teach our children not to prepare, not to study for a test, but to to offer their ideas, then they will have a much easier time. We're pre preparing ourselves for tests. And this is a mistake because humanity uh, is, is, uh, is lost in many ways. I apologize for, for getting on the my moral high horse but this is the only problem because funding can always be be found there's always uh interest there, but there you know the, the biggest problem is how to sell ideas how to present ideas because we haven't taught our those close to us to speak openly and to take responsibility for their actions. This is more of a problem. And we don't support them. This is one other problem. Sometimes we don't hear them. That's what, And that's the third problem. And of course, not a single university in the world will give a young person the education they need to realize themselves. I myself ran away from the Soviet Union. I'm sorry, but I had to learn I had to look for my own teachers. That was the right thing to do in my case. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you have different opinions. Oh, good. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you, Olga. <laughs> OK, Dima, you have a question? Or... Uh, yes, please. Uh, actually, uh, can I follow up on Olga's, right? Uh, 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 I'll speak in Russian uh, because you, you spoke in, in Russian. Don't you think that 
она влияет на сам контент. Я в свое время, когда я работал журналистом, я работал в Грузии. When I was working as a journalist in Georgia, uh, first I worked in Georgia and then I went uh, to the international market. And I found great differences between our local uh, market and the international market. Don't you think that this can, uh, can make your product uh, a bit weaker or, or uh, a bit weaker because you don't have the chance to uh, go deep into particular issues which might not make sense, for example, to a French person. So the internationalization of the product, it can in some way affect the contents, change the content of a, of a product. You, you said the main thing is to sell an idea. You know, when you're presenting an idea to another country, you're changing the idea, isn't this so? Because it wouldn't make sense in the form that it was originally presented in. It would make sense only to a narrower, to a narrow group of people. May I answer? Of course. There are several factors here, and uh, I'll uh, touch upon what uh, Alex said about the synthesis of, epoch, of uh, epochs, and also touch upon what Nelly and, uh, and uh, the young man asked, and what, how our Ukrainian market is different from other markets. We need to take in consideration three factors, politics, money, and communication. Politics in any uh, creative culture uh, dictates its uh, demands. Look at Hollywood, for example, and, uh, and what's happening in the create, creative area. You know, first we create Rambo, and then we create this macho guy, and then we move to a businessman, and now the trend is to talk about LGBT, gender issues, and so forth. This is all politics. The second are means, financial finances, without which you can't film anything. And the third is the communications with the society that we sell our idea to. Of course, Dima is completely right. When we come out to the, a, a different market, our idea changes and uh, evolves into another task. The reason I say this is because we are working with different markets. We have experience working with the uh, Middle East uh, because I'm Muslim. We've worked with the, the Muslim world for many years. And this is a, uh, this is a cultural uh, factor that, that doesn't uh, make sense to Europeans or Americans or J Japanese. Uh, for example, in in uh, Japanese uh, film, there's a different there's a different sense of happiness. So there's different climaxes in the film. For example, cutting off uh, a person's head. I'll I'll speak uh, um, harshly, perhaps. When we look at Sakuru as a way of extending happiness. In the Arab world, this is a way, this is complete, completely L, uh, different. Uh, in American uh, cinema, there, uh, there's a different way of ending the film. In Slavic traditions, uh, there's this happy, happily ever after uh, marriage. And so, of course, everything depends on the particular culture. Nelly asked where where do our boundaries end and where does the other culture begin? It depends on the direction that we look in. Of course, values uh, are the same all across the world, but how can these values be presented? For example, the value of, of, uh, of self-love, honesty, honor, they're presented differently and they're, they're understood differently in each culture and subculture. And so the economic model of Ukrainian 
uh, cinema is difficult, complicate, complex for two reasons. One reason is the desire to adapt to the Western world. And this other factor is an inability to themselves. This is what I observe uh, in many areas, how to develop an idea in order to sell it. Yes, we need to be client oriented. We need to be oriented towards the market where we want to sell it. But the third important mm, factor is self-identification. You will be interesting when you only say what you want to say to the world. And when Dudu and Lala are interesting to the world because we're not changing them. They are expressing themselves using their main identity, their cultural, subcultural, and ethnic identity. And that's why they're of interest. The difficulty is always in the fact when we have co-financing from abroad. Yes, we broaden our opportunities, but we uh, we limit our idea and it turns into a new product. That doesn't mean that it's bad or good, but it's different from what we originally planned. I don't know if if the original idea is good or bad or not, but this is what the market uh, does with your idea, no matter what it is, and no matter what the culture and how we come together, uh, there will be these three factors that affect everything, politics, economics, and communication. Tatiana, she's uh, director of the documentary about Dudu and Lala. And thank you so much. Uh, Yaroslav, what do you think about it? Uh, to continue what uh, Tatiana said, uh, yes, I see more problems not in, yeah, uh, problems not in the fact that uh, we lose our idea, that, that we lose our idea, but the problem is that in Ukraine, there's a problem with understanding our own uh, identity. Uh, our own unicality, uniqueness, and uh, an understanding of what we can present to the world. We don't understand ourselves. And we haven't learned to love what is around us. We don't understand our uniqueness. And this American path, you know, we're taking a lot from the Americans, but in fact, the key to uh, a successful product is probably related to is part of something both unique and something uh, national. There's a, a neighborhood in Kiev called Traishina. And if you're not a European clip maker or director who came here and said, my God, this is a, a very interesting place. Let's film something here. And they come here and f uh, make a clip for a ton of money or make a movie. I think that we 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 would think that Traishina is a place, you know, where no where nobody wants to be, <laughs> because we don't understand the beautiful the beauty and value of this place. And I think uh, things like this are surrounding us all the time, and we need to learn to pay more attention uh, to ourselves and less uh, to what we can gain from other. Uh, what what we adopt from other nations, and this uh, can bring success when we're when we're not, uh, because otherwise we risk losing our identity, losing our uniqueness, our unique value, uh, in cooperation with, uh, with someone else. That's what I think. I had uh, an example: uh, a director uh, wanted to film something uh, related to Islam. A girl in Afghanistan was shot because she was playing uh, volleyball. Uh, this summer, this happened when the Talibs, Taliban came. And he asked me, what's the best way to uh, film this uh, when, you know, when her head was cut off, the parent was uh, put in prison and so forth. And I uh, told him some cultural tendencies, he can't talk about it. And the European director says, no, I want to film it anyway. Uh, you can, I said, you can use different uh, director, uh, different tools. And he says, well, if the 
if the mother is, uh, if the mother uh, agrees to it, uh, you know, I can show. Uh, and I said, no, Haram doesn't allow that. He says, I don't want to offend Islam, is Muslim feelings. You know, this is a question not just of co-production and subcultural or cultural understanding or influence. When we go to another culture with our own mentality, we will never uh, have a proper result because you can't even, you can't feel it and you can't uh, process it, even though it's a director who should uh, ideally uh, have, have this type of knowledge and attitudes. So what uh, allowed, what made him uh, give up this idea or use different tools? It's very simple. I said, you know, in European uh, culture, currently, you can't, uh, uh, if, if you're in the, if you're in the Islamic world and you show a naked body of a mother nursing your child, you won't, uh, you won't uh, gain recognition. Uh, and only using these arguments, uh, I managed to uh, convince the director to uh, film this in a different different way. This is a question of mentality, money, and the desire to develop in a creative uh, area. So we need to have the desire to uh, be able to try on someone else's shoes. But to do this, we need to have the right uh, size of shoes. I think a lot depends on the person, uh, how and how much they are willing to respect other cultures. A person needs to be very respectful as a person. I think this is a very individual question. I think the, each of us understands particular eternal uh, values. For example, fathers and children, uh, generational conflicts. If we bring these uh, topics uh, and compare different cultures, you know, Tanya was talking about the Islamic world, and for me, it's kind of a mystery. It's a different planet, but it's very interesting how how they live. You know, it's very interesting. Yes, it's interesting, but for example, we have uh, applicants today who brought uh, brought up. Uh, subject, the subject of early mar marriages, for example, at, at an age of 13 or 14. And there's different positions. The position of those people is that, that, that is, that's their tradition. And I, I think it's, for many of them, it's, it's uh, normal. But there's also the position of human rights, children's rights, women's rights. And we have a kind of dilemma. Which uh, position will the director uh, defend? And which position will the director promote. And one needs to be very careful, very sensitive. This is a, a problem now for the civilized, civilized world, but it's okay for the Islamic world. Maybe not for everyone, but for those communities where, the, where early marriages take place. And so a lot depends on the director. Um, he has to think about the audience he's, he's playing to. Okay, uh, I'll, I, uh, I'll have to think about it. I had to stop and think. Uh, Olga and Yaroslav. Uh, I just want to add some words. I apologize. Uh, I'm a bit chaotic, and I tend to get this. I can't tend to go on tangents, but uh, I apologize in advance. There's always in in human nature. There's always nature. That's the human, the human's spiritual uh, nature, his ability to uh, establish contact with the, the rest of the world. A director's task is to not, is, is to preserve his own world, but it's always about viewing the world, worldviews. And it's important, you know, why do we have problem with the young, generation of directors. It's because they have an idea, but it's not mature or not yet fully formed uh, 
the worldview is not yet fully formed or mature. It doesn't allow them yet to work with the idea and step into another cultural territory without conflicts, without ruining something, but to create a new resonance. We don't have this yet. I don't know if this is the best example, but the wonderful uh, Sergei Parajana, for example, he's not Ukrainian, but he brought Ukrainian culture to a to the world stage. I'm grateful to him. And you know, one I was in France, and people said, you know, there's this Ukrainian director Sergei Parajana, and I said, people, he's not Ukrainian, but I'm so happy grateful that he didn't ruin anything. He preserved himself. He found friends, you know, people in Kiev know that he has many friends in uh, Kiev, Stepankovic, and many, many others. This is his cultural life, but very few are able to do this. That's his, that's his fate. Uh, People, you know, one small little. So he managed to combine these two cultures as a human, as a director, and brought it to a different, a different level. It seems simple. It doesn't take anything. You don't have to lose your. You don't have to give up your own ideology. And he was a complex person, but he managed to do this. And he's not the only one on the planet who can do this. The fact that we have this difficult problem of ethnicities, different ethnicities, and uh, the rules within a particular society with a lack of desire to uh, communicate with different social levels. But we will, uh, you know, we will find a way to love these different cultures, but there are different keys. There are keys to finding our own interest with, without losing ourselves. It's been a question of what do you want to create or what do you want to be created or what do you want to create? Are you the creator or you want, do you want to force another culture to change? Are you trying to force a change? I don't know how to exp express my myself here, but are you trying to change something? We have a lot of aggression in us. I'm, I'm completely open here. This isn't about the epidemic. It's the time. We live in a time of aggression. It's a despotic time. At the same time, it's very pure. And we hear this in the literature. We hear this in the messages of uh, artists. We hear this in the language we are using. We try to identify the most important things. I don't know about you, but this is happening in my profession. And I'm, you know, I'm not just a choreographer. I jump into other uh, forms of communication with humanity. I apologize for, for being... Uh, so, so when we're talking about what's important to you. The person who's next to you, doesn't matter who it is, even, even a homeless person, they hear it. And the person who's living on the street, he will, he will, take, uh, he will take a gift from you without running away, with gratitude. It depends on the, the message, the presentation, not just in cinema or theater, it doesn't matter. We're all involved in we're all doing the same thing. We're trying to create something without creating divisions. And I think this is much more important. We can force, of course, we know directors who force, uh, who use force to uh, engage with something pure. I'm not talking about business. I'm talking about when you are mature. From my personal experience, when you have a, an idea that's ready, a mature idea. People come to you and say, let's try it. You have you have an idea. 
but you are ready for it. You're mature. I support this uh, this path. I apologize, but that's my that's my personal opinion. That's the only path we have. We have many ex uh, examples of this. You can give your own ex examples. Thank you, and I apologize for the monologue. Namaste. Well, thank you so much. I know that you have a performance in 20 minutes, right, Olga? Yeah, and uh, Yaroslav has uh, also shooting soon. Um, but if anyone has a um, question, we can um, keep going and keep our discussion. And Yaroslav, Olga, thank you so much. If you need to go, we can let Thanks. you go. We are really appreciate your time, your ideas, your thoughts are very interesting. And I think they're very, very um, necessary and useful for, for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening. And I hope have a, a great evening. And I hope we meet in a one place one time. Uh, it was great meeting you and great discussing these important subjects with you. It was very interesting. And we will meet for sure somewhere on this planet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dudu Lala, if you want to continue, we can uh, we can continue, or maybe you also have a uh, also have a performance. We don't hear you. Uh, we have a performance at mm, seven p.m. At seven p.m. we start. Interesting, really. Thank you for inviting, and no, uh, для нас очень так. It was really interesting. Thank you.